Hi everybody, it's Damien Osborne here again, and uh, today um, this is just a bit of a studio visit, uh, chat kind of vibe, and I want to talk about uh, what's inspiring for artists, and um, I hope you stay tuned, and if you have any comments or questions, please shoot. Uh, I'm going to work on this painting here behind me of my wife, and uh, yeah, that's all I can say right now. Okay, today I'm going to be doing some of the final glazing for the painting. So um, I've got some uh, ultramarine blue, Payne's grey, some ivory black and some Indian red. And uh, I'm not one of these people that really cares or likes to fight about using either black or grey in their paintings. It doesn't bother me at all. And uh, I've got some medium here that I made. Um, it's basically three parts refined linseed oil to about one part of odorless mineral spirits. But um, I am going to start making my own um, refined linseed oil soon from unrefined linseed oil or flaxseed oil. So stay tuned for that. I don't know when I'm going to do that, but I'll give it a go. Um, so let's mix this up. Let's uh, check what happens. Okay, so mixing some blue, I am um, ultramarine blue, and uh, some of this red oxide, Indian red. Quite an interesting dark sort of violety kind of browny color. Quite like it. And um, depending on the brand of Payne's Grey, um, I think this is De La Rowney. It's quite an old tube, but anyway, um, generally Payne's Grey is made up of I think ivory black and ultramarine blue. And sometimes a bit of the, you know, a bit of this uh, red oxide color as well, depending. So it's kind of a combination of these three anyway. So you can kind of make your own paints grow if you want to, theoretically. That's a medium. See, it's quite a transparent color. Cool. So I'll use that for the shadows. Okay. Sorry, I didn't notice my hand was in the way there. Um, okay, let's mix some black with a bit of this red. Mm. Try not to get my hand in the way. Slightly more opaque, I guess. But a lovely chocolatey brown color is coming, um, coming forth. We go add a bit of medium, slightly more transparent. Okay, um, let's add a bit of a bit of Payne's grey and a bit of blue. Okay. I'll do it over here, and it's quite thick. 
see. Let's use a brush. So it's a much darker, bluer color, cooler color, I guess. So that's nice and cool, and that's kind of in the middle, and that's quite warm. So I'm going to mess around with all of these and see what comes out. One of the first things I like to do is to make sure that the canvas is clear of dust. So I just take a little house painting brush and brush it off. Done. Okay, so today um, I just want to talk a bit about inspiration and uh, where artists get the inspiration from and well, where I get my inspiration from and I guess um, my inspiration comes mostly from mostly from um, you know, my own life I'm painting my wife here and um, she's obviously, she obviously means a lot to me so I guess I like to paint things that I experience and um, you know, trying not to be fake, I guess not trying to please others through my paintings, but really just express myself. And uh, being in nature, I think that's very important. Um, looking at other art, especially some of the old masters and some of the new contemporary paintings that are really quite beautiful. But uh, I try and stay away from too much Pinterest or too much Instagram. In fact, right now, in the other room, I'm deleting all my Facebook posts. I found a nice... Um, Chrome extension that can delete all your first Facebook posts um, in bulk. So uh, yeah, I think just being in the studio and experimenting all the time, um, making mistakes and learning from them is very important. Sorry, my eye is actually very red because I was working working on my car this week and uh, I was I was um, angle grinding a bit of metal and I think I got some metal in my eye, but uh, it's. I think it's just a bit scratched. Anyway, I'm going to start working on this painting now. Cool. One of the greatest sources of inspiration is um, writing in a journal and uh, I write in it pretty often and mostly about art, experiments and mistakes that I've made, things that I've learned, um, ideas for paintings, dreams that I've had and interesting quotes from other people, from other artists, you know, inspirational quotes. Um, yeah, that helps a lot. Writing down things helps a lot. Um, also, when it comes to working in layers on a painting, you can remember where you are um, from, let's say you were working on a painting a few days ago, and you, kinda, you can kind of write a little, a little message to yourself to say, okay, well, next time when you come to this painting, you must do this and this and that, and then you don't feel so lost when you get to the painting again. Um, I also think it's very important to read a lot, you know, um, especially classics and um, books that make you question your reality, you know, interesting books. Um, I like scientific books sometimes. And uh, movies also. Movies are nice. Not all movies, but I think artistic movies, I suppose. But yeah, a lot of reading about art, and uh, I like to read about um, artists' lives the kind of lifestyle that they had, and the trials and tri tribulations that they had, and how they overcame them. But also, you know, what they were trying to say through the art, and why they were painting what they were painting. And uh, music, I love music. Um, I suppose everybody loves music, but I like music that um, is an inspirational, particularly classical music, I suppose. I also like to read about the composers and how they dealt with their issues in their lives. Um, 
But I think looking at people is very interesting. I mean, I think painting a portrait is one of the most difficult things to do. Um, I certainly find it the most challenging thing to do. And, um, you know, the more you paint people, the more you draw people, you know, just sitting in a coffee shop and just sketching people walking past, it's a major inspiration and it's very good for you as an artist. It really trains your brain and trains your eye. And uh, you really develop a, a real appreciation for people because I think we live in such a fast-paced world that people don't really stop to take a look at each other and, and admire each other and see what amazing feats of nature and, well, what can I say, what amazing mysterious feats we are. And the person's face is really a representation of everything that's perfect in nature and it's a representation of the of the internal life that's coming outward, you know, and uh, it's being shown outwardly. Um, so I find people's faces incredibly inspirational and I wish I could, I just could paint a lot more people. I wish I had more time and I wish I had more talent to just, you know, keep pursuing this and keep doing it. I think that's what it makes me addicted to it. It's just, I mean, I, my wife is pretty difficult to paint because she um, never really keeps still and She's always busy, and I mean, people are always busy, so it's not like you can just go up to somebody in the street and say, hey, I want to paint you, and just hold still for five minutes, and you just get a likeness quickly, and that's pretty difficult, but yeah, I guess you could if you really, really wanted to try, and, and, and they were, they allowed you to do that. I think that would be pretty cool. So I think, basically, um, just developing your talent and getting better at what you're doing really... Um, is inspirational in itself because you start to realize that the kind of things that you can do and the things that you can't do, you know, you, you kind of work on them and improve or two. So um, I think art becomes a sort of self self fulfilling loop where the more inspired you become, the more art you produce, and therefore the more inspired you become further. If that makes any sense. Anyway. You know, when you ask people who play sport, um, you know, why, why do they love their sport so much? What is it about it? And often people, they don't really, they can't really say. It's just something that they, they just love the, they just love their sport. It's just like a bit of an endorphin rush, I guess, and they possibly have always played it, and it's what they're good at. So, you know, I think, I think in a way, art similar. It's, it's just, it's there's a feeling of possibly an endorphin rush too when you just sitting some sitting at a canvas and painting and it's coming together and uh, I mean obviously there's an opposite where it's not coming together and it can be highly frustrating but I think there's something really satisfying about simply applying oil paint to a canvas and seeing something emerge and it's quite meditative and I think in that way it's got its its merit you know we, well, how can I say this? I think sometimes the simplest things in life are the best, and kicking a ball or or painting on canvas, it's pretty cool. Um, why should it be more complicated than that? Okay, so I just decided to take a little break from painting and uh, went up at the back of our house, and I have some students coming for an art lesson shortly. But um, this is also one of the greatest sources of inspiration being up here living in the mountains this is Fishhook in Cape Town South Africa and uh, it's a very windy day the elements are very wild and uh, particularly inspirational for for landscape paintings just being in nature looking at the sea looking at uh, vegetation all the indigenous species here in South Africa Except that over there, that's not indigenous. Anyway, look at those clouds. There's some more plant species. This wind is crazy. Some of the interesting abstract shapes. Now I'm looking at the textures of stones and bark, and plants, all these little things that are very beautiful, 
easily missed. See, this other also has this weird scale. I should actually pull it out, I think. Nature's colors and textures. Really, really beautiful. So today I'm actually supposed to be uh, working on my car and um, <clears throat> changing the steering rack but uh, these tie rod ends are impossible to pop out so I decided to just take a bit of a break and do a bit of sketching and um, yeah I think I, I try and sketch every day if I can um, and sometimes it's not so much about what I'm sketching but more, more the practice I'd say of um, just getting pen to paper and working on the motor skills and uh, excuse the pun actually <laughs> but um, yeah just sketching anything and gaining inspiration from just looking at things and uh, I suppose daily practice so like I said it doesn't matter what you sketch just sketch just do it and um, nice to have a little bit, bit of a break and it's kind of meditative. Yeah, so this is my beloved Jetta, which I'm trying to work on. I'm going to finish this off and get back to work, I think. Hard to do all these little bits and pieces, but... So this is just a ballpoint pen, and uh, it doesn't really matter what you what you use. And yeah, it's just it's kind of fun. I'm not going to go into too much detail here, it's just, it's just a bit of an exercise, that's all. Um, it never really has to be a work of art, I mean, it's just, there's no real worries about it. paintings to do and I have to fix this car so I think it's time to stop a little bit always one more little bit <laughs> Whatever. So something else I like to do is uh, a lot of life drawings and I keep them in a drawer here, as you can see, lots of drawings, anyway, there's a whole stuff there, there's a whole pack here, some more life drawings. Lots of drawings. Oh, there's one a bit of Janine. Anyway. Some are obviously a lot better than others, but it's all practice.
Here's another sketchbook. More drawings. Okay, so I'm back in the studio and um, kind of given up in that car and just want to kind of see how far I get with this painting. Um, but uh, what inspires me about, um, well, what's inspiring me the most at the moment is, um, is nature, painting nature and landscapes and uh, particularly uh, also the, uh, the human figure and as, obviously as well as portraits. But uh, I'm working on a new series at the moment called The Sirens, and um, it's about, uh, well, the way I start it is I, I take drawings that I like from my life drawing classes and um, every week, and then use them for paintings. So the paintings are from imagination, but the drawings are from life. And, um, but I'll tell you more about that another time. I did write a blog about it, but I'd like to do a video also. So I hope you enjoyed the video and um, if you have any questions or comments, please send them through. Tell me what inspires you. Uh, please share the video if you wish. And uh, thanks for watching.